Hayden, let's do that hockey. Yes, sir. So I'm going to start with uh, playoffs for the uh, for the fantasy for those who are still in it. Ty- uh, Tyler, James, you guys are on last week of fantasy hockey. And Tyler, you are behind. Um, it is 1,205 to 969 through week one. I know you had some issues with, with Saturday. I mean, what happened, man? Uh, so once again, uh, I don't know what to deal with ESPN uh, reporting app. Hopefully when ESPN takes over hockey more, they're going to fix their fantasy app too. Because, <laughs> you know, as we mentioned. You know, NBC doesn't get it wrong. You know, I always set my lineup the morning of or the, or the, the night before. And I always check both. You know, before I go to work and I can't do it anymore. And both of the goalies I had starting had that little P next to it. Means means they're probable, which means they should start. And as my top two goalies, I was like, beautiful, perfect. I got the I got a full lineup in there. My, my my top two goalies are go, go, going at it. My two goalies out on my bench were also probables, but, you know, they were the lesser of the two. So I sat, sat them. What do you know? The two guys I started, the two goalies I started did not play. And ESPN didn't do anything to tell me. And then the two guys that I sat on the bench – ended up playing and both did very well. And here I am. I'm, if, if I lose by less than I would say, like they probably score the bench goalies probably scored about 130, 140 combined points. So if I lose by less than that much, that's going to hurt because it's going to be that decision right there. Yep. It that, will be. <laughs> I mean, that's the story of Alex and Eric. I feel like <laughs> that is exactly yeah. why. They, they were out. Um, it's going to be fun last week. Um, so, you know, good luck to both of you guys. ESPN, uh, figure your shit out. Thank you. ESPN, get your, shit out, uh, get your figure shit out. Before we get into it, I'm very sorry. I really try and keep my bias and love for the Oilers and Connor McDavid out of the podcast as much as I can. But I have to give it to this guy. Guys, he, before today, he had 87 points, 13 away from 100 with 14 games left. He, he has to go for two, he has to go two points a game to make it. And he got his two points already. Um, so he's, he's on pace. I just want to say something, some crazy stat that I, I didn't even think was a stat. Max Domi has the most penalty minutes in the, in the league at 73. Connor McDavid has more points than the top guy has in, has penalty minutes. Does anybody know how many times that's happened in the NHL? Zero. 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 The first. That has <laughs> never ever happened and it's good i mean unless max domi gets in like four fights over the next you know <laughs> few games here he, he's gonna do it which is flab it's insane it's that's a, that's an incredible stat um he is having i mean if, if he's not the mvp it's i i'm I, I don't know what i'll do um and i'm sorry i'm trying to keep the bias out but it's kind of ridiculous um but we're moving on to the nitty-gritty the fun stuff um sorry i had to pump some tires there um look guys the playoffs are pretty much set very similar to what alex said in nba playoffs are kind of set i mean mathemat there's mathematical prop possibilities but it's kind of becoming clear who's going in we might see some seating change but um you know i kind of like where the matchups are to an extent um so um i asked alex you know based on the matchups today if, if the playoffs were to start today what matchups kind of in- pique your interest and you know which ones would you tune in for because the kings probably won't be making it yeah, the Kings probably will not be making it. They have fallen uh, pretty far. But I have two, at least in the first round, as we sit right now. Um, there's one in the second round I'll mention, assuming that that's how it goes. Uh, so first, in your Scotia North trade-in, if things fall the way they do, uh, I'm looking like the – you know, it's looking like Edmonton is going to play Winnipeg. I think possible Venza winner – Connor Hellebuck against McDavid and Dreisaitl would be so much fun in a playoff series. I mean, Connor Hellebuck is probably top two, top three goalie in the league right now. Obviously, Connor McDavid is the best player in hockey. Leon Dreisaitl, you know, top five. Um, you know, can Edmonton finally get some go- get something going in the playoffs? Um, I really didn't want to say this because I don't want you to like rip your the rip your pants open with the boner. But <laughs> um, the the McDavid dry sidle versus Hellebuck is just too enticing not to watch. It's just it's like it's going to be fantastic. Um, so that's one. And then somehow the Discover Central Tampa Bay is a is a three seed right now. So the Battle of Florida. Oh yeah. Tampa coming off a uh, you know Stanley Cup win. 
the Florida Panthers, you know, having a really unbelievable season, the battle of Florida, you know, not exactly known for its hockey, uh, will be extremely enticing. Um, especially if I haven't seen anything about it. So trade in, if I'm saying something stupid, let me know. But at the beginning of the season, there was this whole, this whole thing about Kucherov and how he's going to miss the season, but he'd be back for the playoffs because they don't have the cap for him. I don't know if he's still on track, but I haven't heard anything, but if he does get back on track somehow and Kucherov comes back, um, I'll be tuned into that Tampa, Florida one. Also got to see if, if your boy Bobrovsky can, can carry this Florida team who you've shit on for six months now. So uh, those are the two. And then moving on to this, like, this is just what I hope happens is Vegas and Colorado meet up in the second round. I mean, we talked about it last week. They're, you know, probably the two best teams in hockey right now. Um, if not, they're both top five. That will be an epic matchup. Um, whoever comes out of that is going to be battle tested and fucking tired. But um, so, yeah, Edmonton, Winnipeg, the Florida teams, and then hopefully that second round matchup. Yeah. Um, looking at the schedule, looking at the standings, I, th- I think you're bang on. I- I'll tell you right now that the the Oilers Jets series through the season has been my favorite games to tune into. Um, and I've seen, I mean, I mean, every single, almost every single Oilers game and they are always so fun. The Oilers have pounded the Jets this season though. And, you know, I look at it as a double-edged sword that could be either good or bad. Did we, did we wreck them too early and then we'll get wrecked ourselves or, or is it going to sustain? Um, I also like the Maple Leafs Canadians just for the, 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 the ambiance. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, your second one sided. Yeah. Yeah. Your second round pick or between the golden Knights and avalanche I'm praying happens. I mean, everyone should be tuning into that. It would be an amazing, the East doesn't really intrigue me that much. Sorry. I just, you know, West coast bias, you know, I'm trying to change things. You know, everyone loves the East, not me. Um, the floor, the battle of Florida. Yes. I absolutely love that. The fact that both teams are good. Both teams are actually playing pretty well. Panthers are eight, two and oh, and lightning are seven, two and one. Both have had a very, I mean, the series between the two have been very hard fought. I love it. Um, you know, Bobrovsky, I, I still question him, but Chris Drager, the, the other, the other goaltender has been fantastic. Um, and I wonder what, you know, they're going to have to do in the, uh, in the expansion draft. Um, and we're, we're going to definitely have a s- expansion draft, um, podcast. I don't know if we'll do, th- I'll do the same thing as James did, where we'll go through all the teams and see, you know, you know, I don't know how I want to do it, but um, I definitely want to go into that. But I think you're bang on, Alex. I hope that we have that. I hope that we get to have that um, those those matchups and they live up to the hype. Because if they don't, it it, it always kind of sucks. But um, yeah, I'm I'm with you on that. Um, moving on to an award. So we I did an award um, segment, you know, a, a while back. But but the the one that I kind of left out was a Jack Adams, which goes to the 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 best coach of the season. Um, James, I'm going to keep this simple. Who do you think is in the top running for the Jack Adams and who do you, who would you pick, um, as that, uh, for the award? Um, I actually have two that I have like kind of vying for right now. And that's Jared Bednar and Barry Trotz. So I'm going to kind of give my reasons behind both. And then I'm going to see what you guys think. And then I'll tell you what I think. Uh, first Jared Bednar of the Colorado Avalanche. The dude's really good. He's the leading a team. That's a favorite favorite to win the Stanley Cup, one of the few favorites to win the Stanley Cup. He took over the team in 2016 after multiple losing seasons and not making playoffs. And he's kind of built this team to what it is today. Uh, a little fun fact, some stat that you guys may not know, is that McKinnon was there before Bednar came over. But as soon as Bednar got there, McKinnon went from 50 points a season to 90-plus points a season. And it's been 90-plus points every single season that uh, Bednar has been at the helm. He's coached the team through – the loss of McKinnon for a couple of games and having McKinnon not be hundred uh, percent. But he still managed to win a ton of games. They're a top team right now. And he's obviously he's leading a team, one of the best records in the NHL right now. And then for Barry Trotz, the New York Islanders, his style of play that he uses is unique. It's something that not many people do and it's boring. And to have his players buy into that system, into that culture and continue playing day in and day out with the best of their ability without really having fun is incredible to me. And the fact that he does that year in and year out without fail and coaches a winning team 
is a big reason why I think you should also be a favorite for this award. Uh, Tyler, out of those two, who do you think is going to win it? Um, I like the Colorado pick um, pretty much for the, for the reasons you mentioned. Um, I mean, I think, I think this team has been kind of up and down in, in the conversation a lot in, in, in recent years for being top contenders, but this is, I think, the first season they've really taken that step forward and being, you know, probably the best team in hockey. Oh, yeah. um, so, and you got to give like, the coach a lot of credit for that. Okay. Alex. Uh, I'm going to go trots actually. Um, I feel like coaches that win and like win coach of the year, it's not the guys that are supposed to be there. So like the Colorado is a top team. I don't, you know, so I think trots has led his team in a tougher division to a playoff spot. So I'm going to go trots. I like that. Eric. I'm actually going to go with Trotz as well. Um, you look at them, a big reason for their success, their whole system, everything has been built and revamped because of him. So I think you got to give it to Trotz. And they're, they're not a team that has all these, you know, big superstars you hear about besides Barzell. So go with Trotz. I want Jared Bednar. I think he's going to win. I really like him as a coach. Jaden, is there anything that I missed or anything you want to kind of expand on? Yeah, um, I have neither of those guys. Oh, interesting. Um, I, 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 but I, I think you're totally right in your points. I think that those guys are are definitely at the top of the list. Like they, they'd probably be in my top five um, for the points that you just made. Um, I'll, I'll say though that you know, <laughs> I, I think that I think that the way the Avalanche are built, it, it's kind of like the the. Um, the, the lightning of last year, like anybody could ma- make a, a team, a good team out of those guys. Like those guys just kind of or, or almost to the point where they can almost coach themselves because they're just gelling. They're doing it right. They're, they're, they're stacked, but I agree with you. I do like um, Jared Bednar and I like Barry Trotz a lot. I like those picks, but I'm going to give, I'm going to tip my hat to Joe Quinville, Florida Panthers. Uh, who thought that Florida Panthers would be ahead of the lightning this year? Um, not me. Um, here the Panthers missed the playoffs last year. Um, so, uh, so that's a huge step up and Colorado made the playoffs last year. Islanders made the playoffs last year. Um, and Florida, I mean, was one of the first to clinch. Um, they're second in the league with in goals scored. Um, they're a young group and they really only have two major big stars on that group that, you know, we even, we won't even barely talk about them anyway. And they're still, they're still one of the best in the central, um, and so I, I would have to tip my hat to him. Joe Quenville is one of, if not the, one of the best um, coaches in our league and has been for a while. We saw what he did with Chicago. Um, the other one would have to be Rob Brendamore of the Carolina Hurricanes. I absolutely love um, Rob Brendamore. He is the, the way that he, he is a heart and soul kind of guy. You know, he, he, the, the way he leads his teams um, and, and, and bringing in so much speed into his, into his game. And it's just been, they are a, a team that I think everybody should be scared of even like, even the lightning and Tampa Bay, whoever wins that series has to face Carolina. And I would be shaking in my boots because Carolina is no slouch this year, boys. And I think that they have a big shot of winning the Stanley cup this year. Um, and I, I just think they're going to be tough to beat. Um, but I, I like your picks. I, I love your picks, James. I think that though, I mean, I don't think you can go wrong with any of those. Right. Um, I, we also should tip our hat to Dean um, Everson of Minnesota. I mean, who thought Minnesota would be third in what in Honda West. And I, I don't know if that, ha- I mean, they are playing, you know, eight times against Colorado and Vegas. So, you know, they're in a, t- they're in a relatively tough division. I think they're in an easier division than normal. So, you know, it's, uh, you know, I don't know if you can necessarily give it to him, but he has brought on um, Kaprizov and made him look really good. So, he, and, you know, he, that's, his, that's Kaprizov's first coach here in the NHL. So um, you got to tip his hat. I think, he's, I think he's definitely in the running too. I think those five guys that between us that we have mentioned, I think are, um, I think, you know, you could pick out of a hat and I think any of them would be um, deserving. Um, I'm just going to go the other way. And I think Joe Quinville is going to, uh, I would give my hat to Joe Quinnable, but again, I would not be upset if any of those other um, guys that you said, because you had great points, um, really good points. Um, so moving on, Seattle has made their final expansion payment and they are officially the 32nd team of the NHL. So, uh, you know, I, I, I talk about that 31 thoughts podcast, Elliot, you're going to have to change your name to 32 thoughts because now there's a 32nd team. 
Um, the team is looking. So I, I, I read a headline, which is kind of interesting. The team is looking to add some Seattle flavor in game with in game entertainment from, I don't know if they're doing the goal horn or some, some kind of, you know, in between whistle type of thing. We've seen that we've seen it all, all at games and, and even basketball games. Um, so Tyler, I asked you to kind of, I asked you to kind of look at this. I mean, what would that look like? Like what Seattle is going to kind of do with Vegas, like Vegas is whole show. Like they say that if you go to a Vegas game, it's, it's a Vegas show. Like they, they make it a Vegas show. It's not just a hockey game. It's as if you're going to any other show down the strip. Um, and I think Seattle's trying to pull from that, like bring in a lot of Seattle based, you know, feeling and, and ambiance to the games. What does that look, that look like? What is a what does a Seattle game look like? Yeah, Seattle and Las Vegas cannot be any more different uh, right. in terms of their cities. But <laughs> you know, pull, pulling on to Vegas for inspiration and looking, you know, I, I I watched their pregame show for the first. I forgot how freaking awesome it is. It's ridiculous and it's over the top. It's crazy. They got freaking guys flying from the rafters. You know, you know, shooting flaming arrows onto the ice and shit, and it's unbelievable, right? So there's you know kind of night med- medieval kind of theme to it, and it's Las Vegas, of course. You're, it's you're, it's going to be this crazy show. Of course, you got to have that for, for your hockey team. So moving to Seattle, right? Okay, so they're 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 the Seattle Kraken. So that that you can work with that. Like that's a really cool idea, a really cool theme you can do. You can do you know pirates or sailors with the Kraken. They I don't if you guys have not been to a a pro hockey game, most hockey teams if they do it right will use the ice as like a movie screen and yep. do really cool uh, stuff on ice beat beat beat. For the game, the, the the knights do it. I know the sharks probably have one of the coolest ones. They have the shark fin breaking the ice yeah. up as it goes across the ice. It's super cool. So you can do a lot of that with the uh, with 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 uh, the uh, kraken. So picture this, right? So you have you know the ice and you got sailors on on the ice, right? It's you know it's wavy, it's 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 stormy. You know, then you have the you know actual kraken tentacles come down from the rafters. Oh yeah, <laughs> like, in, like oh <laughs> yeah, golf the ice, right? It's gonna be awesome, and you're gonna have you know, nineties grunge music, nineties grunge music playing because that's where grunge music was born. Yep, right? like I love it. Nirvana, Nirvana, Pearl Jam, whatever you want. Right. So you got this, you know, this cool, epic, just grungy music going on. Um, also just for fun, because, you know, Starbucks is, 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 is from Seattle. They're, they're, they're very much well known for their coffee. Every time that the uh, crack and score in a home game, everyone gets a free shot of espresso. Wow. Mm-hmm. That was wired. It's going to be great. Dude, that's going to get so expensive so fast. I Oh, yeah, Starbucks doesn't have any money. Yeah. <laughs> be fine. That's great marketing. Yeah. No, dude, I, I did not expect you to go deep like that, and I fucking love it. Got to. Dude. That was fun. No, <laughs> it's – it's it's I, I, I think Seattle for your uh, in-game entertainment idea person. Dude. I, I you know I got him call him up because that's that I love that I absolutely love that with the grunge music that that yeah. like got me right there because you Have know to. that's where it was born right no um I, I love that idea um does anybody else have any like wacky ideas that Seattle could I, look here's the thing I think we all know that the that the Vegas side is extremely cheesy like that, but that's Vegas right Vegas is cheesy they they have the gold helmets they bring the whole thing but you know while we while we while we hate the gold helmets. Vegas can pull it off because it's Vegas. I think that Seattle could run into an issue where it gets cheesy, right? Like you got to make sure it's, it's sophisticated enough because Seattle is a, is a relatively sophisticated town. Um, but I think what you have, what your ideas are, are you, that you can definitely make it classy. You can definitely make it intense and, and, and part of the culture. Does anybody have any other ideas? What if they had like <laughs> their mascot was like Davy Jones from, uh, oh. from, um, Pirates of the Caribbean, Ooh. like have him like coming down on a piano, like playing, like, like, eat, you know, before <laughs> you the go. game with the tentacles drooping down, like Tyler said, just to add it in, you know, something like that. Yeah, I think, I think, um, as Drayden mentioned, you know, Vegas, very flashy, gold helmets, all that stuff. Obviously, that's not Seattle. I think Seattle, just more of a darker grunge, as I mentioned, kind of feel because, you know, the sun doesn't shine there very often, it rains a ton. It's more kind of a darker, ominous city. I don't know if you guys have been there. I've been there a few times. It's a great city. I I I love Seattle, but it definitely has more kind of a not dark in like a like a evil way, but like just you know kind of a grungier kind of setting. Right. Um. So I think having more of that, more of the dark tones, the cracking, kind of an ominous, you know, rainstorm kind of thing fits more Seattle versus having you know shiny helmets like. They okay, do. but if they're not throwing a giant fish. Like they do at Pike's place onto the onto the ice, 
they're yeah. doing it wrong. Like Detroit used to do with the uh, that's with true. The octopus. Yeah, they have to have. Actual I want them to throw a fucking giant like someone hat trick. Yeah, hat trick. Everyone in the stands throws a fish. Yeah. No, no, I, I, <laughs> I <laughs> throw Alex, fish. <laughs> Alex, you're absolutely right. Now, here's what I worry about though, because the Detroit's been throwing octopus on the be- uh, on the oh, ice my. at the beginning of games for, I, I, I don't Forever. even know how long. Yeah, long ass time. I, like. Can Seattle steal do. that idea? Like it salmon, bad? like it's it's Seattle. Seattle. you have to, because that's what they're known for. You know, the, the fish markets, you're throwing 50 pound fish. Your buddy over there is going to cut the head off. Okay. I don't know if they don't, they got to throw a fish at least for sockeyed yeah. salmon. I, I think so. <laughs> I actually, I actually wouldn't mind the octopus idea, even though it does is what red wings do. I think that, you know, the octopus Why? or the squid is as close to a Kraken as well. Yeah, that's pretty much the same thing. You have to do that. How do you get that into the arena? Put it in your pocket. Yeah, vendors like. Well, Jane, no, they, an octopus. And they're like, oh, just throw it in the ice for forty bucks. Put it in your hat. No, Detroit's right been doing that for ages. They've been they just sneak it so in. Long. It's not like a giant like the octopus. No, it's, it's throws, like, like a big octopus, like forty <laughs> feet long. It's a giant <laughs> squid. You know, they yeah. should throw giant squid on the ice. That's yeah, giant squid. Yeah, the rare, the rare calamari instead. Great idea. Well, listen. I don't know if the executives at uh, in Seattle are li- they listen to this podcast, but dude, oh, they are are way more creative than I thought this they group are. was, and I love it. Um, so if you guys need some <laughs> ideas, come to Tyler and come to TLDR podcast. At Tyler King Twenty Twitter. Um, yeah, I, I love it. I love it. Um, we're moving on. <laughs> we're moving on. NBC will cease to broadcast NHL games for the first time since the 05 lockout. NBC is donezo. They did not want to pay up, and the NHL said, fuck you, and found someone new. Um, Turner Sports, so t- your TNTs, I believe that's uh, TBS, um, all, those sports, um, all those sports channels, um, is, has signed up for a seven-year agreement, taking up the additional $225 million per year, um, and they're going to split duties with ESPN. ESPN has forked up the 400 million. Um, so it's a total of 625 million. That's way more than the 200 million per year that NBC was giving um, the NHL for the entire, you know, for the entire thing. So the NHL has one big um, Eric, what are your thoughts about, and when we talked about the ESPN size, what are your thoughts about the NHL being broadcast on TNT TBS now? I mean, it's great for the game. Um, it's surprising, you know, in the U S that hockey still really isn't that popular. You know, there's still a lot of people that don't really know about it. Don't really watch it. I guess the people that have gotten into it, maybe went to live games and that got them into it more. A lot of people you talk to now too, they'll say, Oh, I like going to games, but I don't really watch it. But I feel like once you get really get into the sport, watching it, you kind of know where the puck's going to be. Um, I think it's good for hockey. Um, NBC though, they did do a good job. I think they had good, mostly, most of the time, they had good NHL analysts, guys who once played. Um, you know, they did have a lot of those negative dudes, like, um, what the fuck's his name that I'm trying to think of? Probably Mike Trading. Milbury. Yeah, Mulberry, Milbury. Um, JR was good. You know, he was a different take. They have, like, Patrick Sharp there now. They have they have a lot of, of previous NHL players of recently and of – farther back um so i'm just hoping espn and tnt have um good analysts as well i I believe they will hopefully they keep barry melrose still with the espn stuff because he's been the long time espn hockey guy but you know like spitting chicklets brought this up it'd be kind of funny like you know tnt with basketball they have like Shaq and uh charles just like baffling like they should have that with uh with some hockey guys and and hockey girls but you know like because it's NBA was good about they have Candace Parker in there now. She has a lot of good insight. Have like another women's hockey player like Kessel in there, you know. Yeah. Um, but having that kind of style with hockey would be good too. I don't know if you can like re-replicate that with uh, basketball versus hockey, but I think it's it's going to be good for the NHL nonetheless. I I think you're absolutely right, and I was actually going to ask you. I think, look, I'm I'm the I'm the non basketball guy in this on this podcast, and I absolutely love Shaq. I absolutely love Charles Barkley. They make me laugh. Um, their their takes are sometimes ridiculous, and they get called out on it right on air, and I absolutely love it. That and the thing is, is that that they are able, like they they're Hall of Famers, and they're able to be you know outlandish and and show their show their true selves. 
So I ask you, do you have any idea of that t- caliber of player that would be able to bring that type of, you know, show if we, if they were, were to try and replicate it, who could they bring? I mean, how many years do you think Lucic has left? <laughs> Not very many. Show? Not very much, but he'd be he could great. be a guy maybe you potentially bring in. I've heard like off the ice, he's a funny guy, but I feel like people either love or hate him. Um, you know, someone even spitting chicklets brought up, it'd be funny, like Bit Bissonette, even though he wasn't in the NHL that long, he's not like a you know superstar player, but he's a great like hockey personality, or even yeah. getting like him and Whitney on like sub appearances, you know, yeah, um, would be good. But I don't, it's it's hard to tell because I feel like getting Phil Kessel might be good, even though he seems to be really quiet, but yeah. everyone says he's hilarious. You can get Reeves on there eventually, <laughs> you know, you can get like guys with good personalities it's hard a lot of times nhl keeps it kind of under wraps compared to the nba so yeah it's hard to tell i i i agree with you i think it's tough because i mean it i'm not saying that you know Shaq or or barkley is the wayne gretzky of 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 the nba of the nba right but those two are both hall of famers and i can't think of one hall of famer that has the personality that those two bring you know a gretzky would just be blah like i i love the guy but he'd be blah uh, McDavid's falling in his shoes. He's the most like boring person ever. <laughs> um, so, you know, it, it's kind of tough, but um, I, I, I agree with you. I think that this is a, this is a big step for the NHL. They're making a lot more, um, you know, per year than they were with NBC. I think that, I think that ESPN has, and T- Turner sports have an opportunity to, to reach to a greater number of people. The biggest thing for me is most of the NBC games, we're on NBC SN, which is not a very easy channel to get if you have if you have basic channel or basic you know channels. TNT and TBS, almost every basic channel has that, and so you're you're easily reaching to a lot bigger um, amount of people. Same with ESPN. I mean, I mean, a basic c- cable package is going to give you the basic ESPN. So, um, in terms of out- reaching to you know everybody, I think that they're going to have a better they're going to do a better job of doing that. And I think NBC in a lot of ways, I agree with you. They did do some things right, but for, you know, 10 years or, you know, seems like actually, I guess 15 years, I felt that they dropped the ball on a lot of things. So I really hope that ESPN and Turner can, um, can fix that. Although before I end Turner sports already pissed me off because they, they broadcast their deal and they had a picture of Ovechkin and Oilers captain Andrew. Uh. (laughs) <laughs> Andrew over Connor McDavid. they mixed up andrew ference with Connor mcdavid what a great fucking start turner sports i hope Ooh, that that, that is great. the only blunder you have the the next- so wait ference was their captain when they were just complete dog shit yes and yeah. i love him but he's he was no on Connor the team and everything <laughs> so well that's a great start but james that is all i have this week another great segment Jaden. loved it yeah.